Hi everyone. So today's lecture is uh, lecture 17. This is on least square fitting. Um, and this is the first part, the first lecture on the last section of the class. So I'm going to call that uh, here in my lecture notes, if I can find my cursor, I'm going to call that, you know, part zero of this lecture. So um, this last part of the class uh, I call numerical calculus. So we started out and we, oh, that was kind of terrible. We started out and we did um, a basic introduction to programming and to Excel very briefly. Um, and then we've spent the last several weeks talking about numerical algebra, about linear algebra and nonlinear algebra problems. Um, and now we're going to ramp our way up um, and we're going to do three topics in this area. Um, we're going to talk about fitting uh, and interpolation. And hopefully you'll see how that will apply uh, to the rest. So interpolation in particular is going to be relevant um, for talking about integration. We'll talk about doing numerical integrals. Uh, and then finally, we'll talk about, uh, to end the course, some simple uh, differential equations. Um, and uh, what I want to highlight about there is um, you're not going to need uh, uh, the ODE's class or PE's class um, to be able to do this. We're going to talk about a class of differential equations, which we'll, we'll call rate equations, um, and uh, we'll basically just need to set them up. Um, but of course, a class in differential equations um, will help deepen your understanding of that part. So let's dive right in for today on... Uh, uh, least square fitting, and let's talk about that. So the first part uh, we're going to talk about is uh, least square fitting. And I mean maybe to just outline real quick, which I didn't do today, so uh, the first part is going to be uh, least square fitting. And then we're going to uh, do this um, in Excel for the first for the first example and our second example will be the same thing but in Python. So that's our outline for the lecture. So uh, the first part let's talk a little bit conceptually about least square fitting. So I'm going to start that off with an example. So suppose that you're going to go for a run, you're going to go for a jog and um, when you go on your jog you put on a Fitbit, and the Fitbit tracks your distance. So suppose here you are at, you know, this is the displacement x equals zero, um, this is x equals, I don't know, whatever, okay? And you go out on a jog, and the Fitbit, you know, measures um, your distance with time, okay? And so this is time down here. All right, uh, and uh, there you go. That's the data that you get. So this is data from a jog. Not a job, a jog. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> so now suppose you would like to know uh, how fast you ran. So you'd need some kind of mathematical model to describe uh, the speed. And suppose you say, I ran at about an approximately constant speed. So I'm going to say my model is x, which is my displacement. So I'm going to make sure we say that displacement over here, OK, uh, is equal to some velocity times time. OK, so here's my displacement. Here's time. All right, and this is the velocity. Okay, so somehow we want to find what the speed is that describes this. So we could take the two endpoints, for instance. You know, this was your house, this was the place you were running to, and we could, you know, take those two points and, and divide them, but we'd like to use all of the information along here. So if we took any two data points, we could connect them, right? And if we connected them, we would get an instantaneous speed, 
but we wouldn't get our sort of overall speed, right? So these are instantaneous. Velocities. My marker's a little fat. I'm going to change that here if I can. Let's see if I can do the pen tool. Uh, let's see. Let's see how this one works. It's a little thin. Let's go medium. All right. Sorry about that. A little change. Okay. So suppose that's my instantaneous velocity. But suppose I want to have something that fits all of the data more or less. That is not the best line. I can try one more time. See if I can do it. Okay, that's a little better. So suppose I want a line that like that looks like that, that fits all of the data. I'm going to call that the best fit line. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> um, what what we're saying is that all of this other stuff that's happening here is irrelevant to this velocity that I'm interested in. What we're saying is all that other stuff is just noise, right? So, you know, we only care about the average behavior. Okay? And not the noise. All right? So, um <clears throat> Just to maybe make a, a comment, our, so our model could be wrong, right? So it could be that our velocity actually, you know, depends on time and we need to include something else. Maybe there's a hill here, you know, and that made us go slower. But suppose that we just ran on a flat surface and we had approximately constantly constant velocity. All these other, you know, wiggles in the data, it's just, you know, things that we don't care about. So, uh, you know, so um, this is assuming the model isn't wrong. Okay, so if the model's right, then all this other junk is just noise. And what we can do is write down a slightly different version of the model. Pardon me while I move that, uh, my notes there. Okay, we can write down a slightly different version of the model where we include a variable for the noise. So we say that the x is equal to the velocity times time plus a noise term. And what I'm going to say is that each value of the x, all right, so each one of these points, so each one of these guys are has a point t i x i, all right, so each one of those points at a given time is going to be given by the velocity that I was going plus some noise random component, all right, so this is random noise. All right, and this i is um, is just a a variable that count you know it's a counter for the number of data points. So it goes zero, one, you know, n minus one for n points. All right. So what we'd like to do is how do we go about figuring out what this velocity is? How do I know what that is? All right. I know this. I measure that. I know this. I measure that, and I, I don't know this, but I think it's not important, okay? So I think this one's not important, okay? If I thought there was something else besides this going on, I'd have to change my model, right? If there was a hill to take into account, I'd have to change my model, but I'm not gonna do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna vary the, f so this is the key idea of least square fitting. So here we go, least square fitting. says the following in words and then I'll write it in math. It says vary the free parameter, okay, which in this case uh, is V, which we'll see, right, okay, to minimize uh, the total uh, error from noise. Okay, so mathematically what I can say is I'm going to solve for this noise term. I'm going to say this noise term is going to equal xi minus uh, vti. So I say, okay, 
you know, here is um, what I would predict, right? This is my prediction for x. Um, and I'm going to say take x minus the prediction for x, and that's going to be some error. And what I want to do is minimize that error. So I'm going to do like we talked about earlier. I'm going to take the sum of the squared error. So I'm going to take the sum over i of epsilon sub i squared. So that's going to give me the sum over i of x sub i minus v ti squared. Okay? So now look, this sum of the squared error is a function of the velocity. So depending on what the velocity is, I'm going to get different values for the sum of the squared error. And what I'm hoping is that if I put sum of the squared error here, and I have the velocity here, I'm going to get a, something convex, and I'll be able to find a minimum. All right? And so what I want to do is find that one right there. I want to find v star, right, the minimum. Right? And so that's the hope, is that we can do that. So uh, this is not so different, or it's actually very similar to solving a nonlinear equation with an optimization scheme. Okay, so this is like uh, solving a nonlinear equation with optimization. Okay, kind of like that. It's not exactly the same, right? I'm minimizing an error trying to find this, right? But I'm going to use a similar kind of method. Uh, in this case, we don't expect the sum of the squared error to go to zero, okay? We don't expect it to go to zero, um, but just, just small. We just want it to get as small as possible, all right? So notice that what's going on here is I have too many variables to make it zero. I have all of these data points to make it zero. And I only have one parameter, okay? So um, I have too many uh, variables to uh, get SSE equal to zero, okay? So we call this an overdetermined system. You can think of it, um, this is maybe, this isn't super important, okay, this idea, but uh, maybe there's some of you that, that are following this. This is like saying I've got each one of these x's and t's is an equation, okay, x is equal to vt, all right, but I only have one variable that I can change to make them equal, right, so it's impossible to fit, that's why it's overdetermined. It's impossible to make it perfect, I'm just trying to do the best that I can. All right, so many equations, not enough unknowns. Okay, only V. All right, so before we go on and talk about, oh, as my notes fall over, oh, I, I do need to write down one more thing before I say this other bit. So um, let me add a new page here at the bottom. Okay, so let me write the general formulation. All right, so the general formulation of a least square fit says the following. It says that I can write my error as yi minus f of xi. So this is data, and this is data. Okay, and this f is my model, or my prediction. Okay, and then I can write the sum of the squared error, all right, uh, as um, equal to the sum over i of epsilon i squared, which is equal to y, oh, I need the sum still, the sum over i, of yi minus f of xi. Okay? And um, note that this function, we could, we could write this slightly differently. 
if we wanted if we wanted to include the velocity in here what we would say is something like the sum of the squared error oops too many s's sum of the squared error and i could give it a parameter let's call that i don't know c all right um, is equal to the sum of i of y i minus f of x i um, semicolon c all right uh, squared I forgot the squared all right so all i'm saying here is if there's some parameter that that sum of the squared error depends on which in our case was the velocity this is what we're going to then end up minimizing all right and then the process is minimize some of the squared error with respect to C. Okay, so that's the general formulation. So the last thing we'd like to say um, is we'd like to know something about um, what we're going to call goodness of fit. Okay, and what, what we want to know here is how well does this model we've written down, how well does it explain the data? Okay, so how well does our model fit or explain the data? Okay, so to do this, we're going to come up with a metric, um, which we're going to call uh, R squared, which is uh, what's called a coefficient of determination. Okay, and if you've taken a statistics class, you've probably seen R squared before. If you haven't, uh, you will see it when you take statistics. So uh, R squared comes from two quantities. At least this is how we're going to think about this in this class. So I'm going to draw some stuff up here. I'm going to draw two plots. And they're both going to have this example of the Fitbit data. So suppose, you know, here's my Fitbit data. Fitbit data again, okay? And um, suppose over here, I just calculated the average. So if this is my Y and my X, my X and my Y, so each one of these points, right, is a little X sub I, Y sub I, okay? And here I'm gonna calculate Y bar, all right? And Y bar, this is the average. So if I wanted to know um, uh, uh, how well my model explains my data, an average, uh, you know, doesn't explain my, it explains a, a tiny bit, but I can tell how far away I am from my average if I were to add up all of these little errors, right? So if I add up all these little differences, if I take the sum over I of y i minus y bar, okay? In some sense, the average is like the, the sort of simplest model I could come up with. This is gonna give me a sum of my sort of total spread of my data, okay? So this is called uh, the SST, um, which I can't remember the acronym off the top of my head, but that's sum of the squared something, okay? Um, and this is my total spread. Okay, now what we had just saw was something like this. Okay, and this was our model here. So this was f of x i. And we can also look at the spread around that one. Okay, we can look at y i minus f of x i, which is equal to the error, remember, which is equal to this noise. So the sum of the squared error is the sum over i of f of x i minus y i squared, forgot the squared here, or the sum of the error squared. All right, so think about a measure of how good this fits. So if I wanted some fractional measure, if I said R squared is gonna be equal to the total spread minus the spread from the error divided by the total. So think about this for a minute. 
Now, suppose that I had a really crummy model that was just equal to the average. So in that case, um, my, I would have tons of noise and the sum of the squared error would be big. Okay, this would be big, almost up to SST. Okay, and if that's the case, SST minus SST is me a zero on top. You know, so if SSE is big, I get R squared is approximately SST minus SST divided by SST, and that's almost zero. Okay, so that's uh, one case. That would be uh, a bad fit. Okay, now suppose the opposite case. Suppose that SSE fits really well, and or, or that the model fits really well, so SSE is small. In that case, R squared is approximately SST minus zero divided by SST, and now that's about one, so that's a good fit. So this is like a fractional measure of how much of the error, okay, of the total error, right? This is like the total spread of the data. Okay, how much of the total spread is contained in my model, right? This is my total error of model, okay? So if my total spread of the data is big and then the total error of the model is also really big, then I'm gonna have a bad fit. But if I have a nice big spread about the data and my model has a really tiny uh, spread about it, then I've done a really good job with my model explaining that spread about the data, okay? So that's the, the coefficient of determination. All right, so that's enough for the theory. So let's turn our hand, or our attention rather, over to our last two parts. So we're gonna look at um, fitting um, in Excel for a moment. Excel, and then we're gonna look at fitting in Python. Okay, um, so let's turn to Excel. So I'm gonna scroll down here to Excel, which is, okay. So there are two different ways that we can um, do fitting in Excel. And uh, the most simple is if I only have polynomials, so if I'm only gonna fit, so maybe I'll write this up here, so if I only have, um, I'll put this out here. There's two ways. Okay, one is with polynomials. And the other is not polynomials. Okay, remember a polynomial looks like, uh, you know, some function that's like x cubed plus x squared minus 3x plus 2. Okay, only you know, powers. All right, so if I have something simple like a polynomial, uh, I have my data here, uh, x and y data, and it would look like this. So not linear like the example I was just drawing. So what you can do is you just make a plot of the data and you right click on it. And you can click add trend line. And you can pick these different trend lines. It turns out they have a couple others besides polynomial, but linear is polynomial uh, two. And so if we pick polynomial, say, of quadratic order, um, we can get a fit. Now that fit's not extremely useful because uh, I don't know an equation for it, but it turns out you can come down here in this little box, display, uh, click display equation and R squared, and you can see that it will give you a fit. So numerically, you can get a fit uh, very quickly in Excel. This is one of the most useful things uh, I think that Excel does, is it does fitting extremely quickly for you and uh, gives you R-squared values really quickly for things like polynomials and other simple functions. Okay, so um, why don't you take a quick second, pause the video, and practice with this data that I've given here, making a plot and uh, fitting a third order polynomial to it. Okay, so uh, hopefully you did that. 
um, I'm going to leave this example uh, and I'm going to now go on to uh, this uh, second example here of doing a fitting using solver. So in this case you can uh, go through and read for yourselves here if you have a little more time um, but suppose I have some model uh, and this model uh, here is a model of uh, pressure uh, that I get by having three different coefficients a, b, and c. And uh, so now instead of just having say a velocity I'm going to fit all three of these coefficients a, b, and c. And notice that this is not a polynomial, it's not a function that was in my trend line. So what do I do? So I have my temperatures here, T, which are like my X values. And using this right hand side, I can predict uh, what the pressure should, or excuse me, this is the data for the pressure. So this is like my Y. And here is the predicted value. So this uses uh, I, I arrange to solve for PSAT since I have data in PSAT and I get 10 to the A minus B divided by T plus C. All right. And um, <clears throat> I now have values for both the predicted and the, uh, the, you know, the model prediction of the pressure and the original pressure. All right. And so uh, what I need to do is find the error. So I find the error by subtracting them. All right. Now in this case, it's easier instead of taking the difference between them, it's useful to take the log and to find the difference between them for numerical reasons. Okay. And then you can take that error and square it. All right. And then what you do is take a sum of all those squared errors right here, and you get the sum of the squared error. So now let's sort of review what happened. So I have my data here, my temperature data and my pressure data. That's what's plotted in the blue points right here. This was given in the problem. And then I said, let me code my prediction. So the prediction is, you know, 10 to the uh, A minus B over T plus C, where I define three variables, A, B, and C. Okay, then I find the error, the difference between them, I've chosen to do that after taking the log, but it should matter really. And then I square it. Okay. And now what I want to do is minimize this squared error by using solver. So I come over here, data solver, click on uh, the sum of the squared error box. And I want to change these three variables, A, B, and C. They're the three variables that are going to give me a better fit. And let's see, make sure that this is unclicked, all right? Uh, make, I don't, uh, I think that doesn't matter if they're negative in this case, but sometimes that messes with stuff. And click solve. And it minimized the squared error. Okay, and look at that really nice fit. Okay, look, notice that my sum of my squared error is on the order of 10 to the minus 2, 10 to the minus 3. Um, it's not really, really small. I didn't find zero, but I minimized it. And now I have values for A, B, and C. And look, it was good. I clicked that. That C is actually negative. Finally, how do I get the R squared value? In Excel, there is a function called RSQ. And RSQ takes the Y data, okay? Uh, oh, it actually takes the Y data and then my predicted model data. So it says known X's, but this isn't the temperatures. It wants my predictions. Okay. And you can see more of that if you click on the function here. Um, it tells you uh, known X's is the range of data points. Uh, oh, it's just telling you that. That's kind of lame. So actually, I'd click help on this function if you want to see that in more detail. Um, it's telling you here uh, what you want to do with your y's and x's. I still think that's a pretty lame explanation. So I'll just tell you that um, you want the two different y values, right? The y from the data and then the y that's predicted. You don't want to use this x value despite the fact that it says x's. I think that's a different notation from statistics that uh, will just confuse you. Okay, 
So that's how you do this. So again, this is very similar to solving a nonlinear equation, except now you're using data instead of just functions, right? So your function here has to operate on every one of these data points to get a prediction. All right, so why don't you go ahead and practice uh, doing that uh, with this least square uh, uh, fitting example uh, for this you know, small amount of data here for this little model. Okay, so if you're finished with that practice, let's turn our attention to fitting in Python. And in Python, we're going to see that we have the same two types of examples. We have an example uh, where we're going to do polynomials. And we have an example where we're going to do more general curve fits. Okay, so for polynomials, we're going to use a function called uh, polyfit. All right. So what's going to happen is that you're going to need some x and y data. So these are our xi's and yi's. And these are, are going to be uh, ranges. And so um, to just show you what that looks like, let me comment out some stuff here in Python. And I'm going to run this. And I'm just going to make a plot here of the data. So you can see there's my data. So that data was given. And the first thing that I need to do is I need to call this function polyfit on the x data, the y data, and then I give it a value of the order of the polynomial I want. So this is a third order polynomial. So if I run this, if I type P3, what happens is it's going to return the coefficients of this uh, polynomial that fits. So remember, a third order, order polynomial is going to have a term in front of x cubed, x you know x cubed x squared x and then a coefficient so there's four values so those are these four values so it just returns those numbers so then if you want to make uh, data that fits it uh, or excuse me you want to take your model and put your model through the data you need to then define some function that uses the x cubed x squared x and the coefficient and it turns out that uh, numpy also has uh, a convenient function for doing this called polyval. So polyval takes these coefficients and then it takes an array of x's and produces a y that has, you know, this times x cubed, this times x squared, one of these times x and just one of them and adds them all up. And so you can make a plot and look like that. Okay. So, um, but this polyval function, it's doing the same thing as if I had taken x sub p times uh, p3, uh, I think it's 0. Let's look that up actually real quick. Um, we can look which order that is. So let's see, numpy polyfit. Polyfit, yeah, x0 times to the degree. Okay, so the polynomial is p0 times x to the degree. So let me just minimize that. So if I do xp times p3, 0, plus, let's see, xp cubed times p3, 0, plus x sub p squared times p3, 1, plus x sub p times p3, zero, or 2, plus x, uh, let's see, plus p3, 3. That gives me a value, and that should be the same as yp, and it is. Whew. You can see that those are all zeros. So that's all that yp is doing, is it's evaluating that out for you, so you don't have to do it by hand. Okay, so that's what polyval does. All right, so that's how you do a polynomial fit. So all of the fitting is done inside that function. You don't have to do anything. So again, this is equivalent to uh, making the plot and then clicking add trend line. All right, in Excel is to use polyfit. Um, unfortunately, Python does not have a nice R squared function. So you have to make your own R squared function. Luckily, we know how to do that. All right. And so here's one where I've done it for you. Um, and what you can see is you just take, you need two things. You need to know the data and the prediction. So you can take the data uh, minus the prediction. That's the error squared sum it up, that gives you the sum of the squared error. 
and then to find the sum of the squared, uh, uh, man, I really should look up what SST stands for. Let's just do it right now. I'm bugged that I can't remember. Um, SST statistics. What does SST stand for? Total sum of squares. Oh, yeah, of course. Total sum of squares. Sum square total. My bad. Um, all right. So uh, now we're going to take the uh, data minus the average. That was the y bar. Okay. Take that, square it, and take the sum. And then remember I had SST minus SSE, all quantity divided by SST. Well, the two SSTs in the front, they cancel, and I can just have one minus SSE over SST. Okay. So uh, if this is my, you know, predicted data here, I'm going to uh, take predicted values. And notice that I only want to use at the points that were given, okay, at these x given. This one here, I made a lens space so I could get this nice plot that gives me lots of points here. But if I want to evaluate r squared, I only want to evaluate at each of these blue points. So what I, so that I could show you, I could do um, x given and y predicted after I run this right here. And it'll show you there, I only have these points now. Okay, so that's the points I want to, um, that's the points I want to compare. And so I'm going to run polyval again just on the x given data to get those. And then I run r squared to get the r squared value. And there, the r squared value is 0.987 or so. All right, so that's how you do polynomial fit and the coefficient of determination. The last thing is, so how do you do a more difficult uh, curve fit? Okay, to do a more difficult curve fit, um, you have to do something that's similar to how we solved a nonlinear equation uh, in Python. And what you do now is you use uh, scipy.optimize and um, so they, uh, so you're going to import scipy.optimize, and there's a function called curve fit. So hopefully, you know, we used root, we used minimize, and now we're going to do curve fit. And in curve fit, what you do is you define the function that you want to fit. So in this case, I have some data that looks like it's going to fit an exponential, and there's the data. This is just data that I'm making up, and I'm going to fit that data. Okay, so here's all the data. Let me take out the fit for a second. Okay, so here's all the data. Okay, now I define this function. This is something that um, you need to be given, right? You need to say, oh, this is the thing you're going to fit to. And there's three parameters that I want to change, A, B, and C. Remember that when we did root and when we did minimize, we had to have all of this stuff all in a single uh, uh, array. We had an array function. But this is different with curve fit. In curve fit, each of the parameters is a separate argument. And now what you do is you call curve fit, and you give it the function f, and you need to give it the data. You give it the x data and the y data. So you call f x data y data, and it returns these parameters a, b, and c. So if I run it to there, you can see that it returns the parameters, and there are three of them, a, b, and c. And it's in the same order uh, of what's going on there. All right. It also returns a bunch of stuff, a bunch of statistics. And you can just ignore that. All right. So you can put a thing there, and it will just dump it in there, and you don't have to worry about that for our class. Okay. Oh, pardon me. All right. So now if you want to plot it, you need to use your parameters that you determined, okay? And these, uh, you know, this a, b, and c uh, to evaluate your function. And so that's what I'm then plotting here, is I'm plotting the data and then the fit data as a black line on top. And you can see what a, b, and c are from the params. And I plot those on the plot here by doing plot.txt. Okay. So um, why don't you, uh, you know, this is the end of the video, but I have a little practice problem here. I have some extra data called Lecture 17 data. And you can, um, it's really good practice to go ahead and try and do polyfit on this X and Y data. 
um, and see if you can fit a fourth order polynomial and see if you can do the same thing by defining a function that has a fourth order polynomial and see if you can uh, use that and uh, this data and get the same parameters that you have by doing curve fit as you can get by doing poly fit. Okay, so hopefully this has been helpful. Hopefully this helps you do your homework. Um, this is uh, fitting in Python and Excel and I think that's all I've got for you.